Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, I guess, depending on which time zone you're in right now across the country. I'm Scott Belford, joined as always by the best co-host in the biz, Adam Mack. So here is what has just happened. We were going to have Sportsnet producer and content creator Chris Black, great on Twitter, at Down to Black, on with us here. We were going to go live so that everyone could kind of get their questions and then do their thing. And what has happened is uh, his boss called him. They are rescheduling things for the playoffs currently. He didn't want to do a uh, video because he's in a mess right now. He's driving. He's covered anyway, in chocolate long, sauce. Long story short, <laughs> Chris Black is going to join us instead tomorrow. But we figured, you know, we've got the eight or ten a year or whatever here live right now. Adam and I might as well do a, a short little episode and, and talk some Blue Jays and baseball with you. Uh, so here we are. Let's get into it. Here we are. Uh, quick, right off the top, Scott, uh, I threw a poll up. How many wins do the Blue Jays get versus the Yankees this series? 60% say two wins. 40% say we get the sweep. How are you feeling? I think we get two wins. It was interesting listening to at the letters the other day because they were talking about if the Blue Jays win these first two games, today and tomorrow, mm -hmm. and Baltimore and Boston win one apiece, if the Yankees beat the Blue Jays on Wednesday, the Yankees clinch... The Blue Jays clinch if Baltimore loses Wednesday, and they will both be in the playoffs on the same day. Double so clinch. The, the Yankees, double clinch. The Yankees would clinch the AL East is how that would work. All right. So a lot of champagne so flowing in Toronto. Did both teams just climb in the, the party balloons together, or how's that work? I would I would think it's a separate party, right? <laughs> <Okay>. Pro <laughs> probably a separate party. I'll give you that. Pizza to both clubhouses, but uh, they're going their separate ways. Okay, I, I did want to, you know, this was one thing we were going to talk about with Chris, but we might as well talk about it right now because this Yankees series starts today. Do you think Adam Aaron Judge breaks Roger Maris's AL record for home runs in Toronto? He's sitting at 60, so he's one off of tying it. 62 would give him sole possession and the record-breaking home run. Right now, tickets are going for $150 each in the right outfield. Pretty Or the left outfield seats. The right outfield's pretty much completely sold out. Zach Campbell, of course, is going to be there, the big baseball collector that everyone dislikes because of uh, his ability to constantly get in the way of children and take the ball. Uh, do you think he does it? Do we see this record broken in Toronto? I mean, my gut instinct is he's due for a couple home runs, right? I don't want the Blue Jays pitching to Aaron Judge. I've been saying this for weeks now. When he comes to Toronto this week, I didn't. I want to see him walk straight to first base. Don't even put your bats on the flight. Like, just leave them in New York. You don't need them. Kevin Gossman, I don't think he takes deep in the first game. But game number two, Jose Barrios. Game number mm -hmm. three, Mitch White plus. Yes. Uh, Our bullpen day, if you will. <laughs> yeah. He probably uh, does it, right? He probably does it. I think I'm going to go with the he does it. I'm going to go with maybe ties can i can i do that maybe he gets one let's yeah. put the over under at one and a half i'll take the under i think he gets zero to one home runs you think he okay. gets two or more So i think he gets two i'm going to say he breaks the record in toronto and i like that you're going the other way you're saying he ties the record but there will be no broken record in toronto in this series one less bottle of champagne so i was going to talk uh Aaron Judge in the postseason with Chris Black and we'll bring it up tomorrow with him but I I do want to know what you think and we can get into this a little bit and everyone in the chat feel free to jump in and let us know what you're thinking 
Aaron Judge has not been intentionally walked like other record-breaking power hitters have. McGuire, Sosa, of course, Barry Bonds were given free passes at a far higher rate than Aaron Judge has in 2022. Do you think come the playoffs this changes? And again, everyone in chat, feel free to uh, let us know what you're thinking here. Come the ALDS, the division series, will we finally see some teams putting pressure on the hitters behind Judge in that Yankees batting order to produce and give Judge first space? If you look at his numbers in September, he has been unreal. Godlike, if you will. Like, he's literally in possession of the Triple Crown right now. However, the supporting cast in the Yankees has been a problem, and they've been a problem since the All-Star break. I mean, we have talked about how much ground these Blue Jays have made up on the Yankees in that time. The Yankees were 16 and a half games up on the Blue Jays going into the All-Star break. Currently, they are, let's just double check here, I think it's about six games, but we'll get the uh, final numbers here. Okay, so they're eight and a half. So the the Jays are, are, I mean, the AL East is pretty much decided, obviously, with nine games remaining, and the Yankees would need to lose out and the Jays win out for anything to happen. So that's not going to happen. But the Yankees have scuffled, I think is the, the proper term here. Does Aaron Judge get some free passes come the playoffs? Would you, if if the Blue Jays are who gets past their wild card series and they're playing the Yankees in the division series. Would you, Adam, like to see the Blue Jays in certain situations walking Aaron Judge intentionally? Well, for me, I guess it comes down to, like, how are the hitters doing around them, right? Right now... Yankees have been hitting Aaron Judge leadoff. I guess that's probably the best place for him, especially when you're trying to get him that home run record, right? Like you want to get him as many at bats as possible. Behind him, they've been hitting Anthony Rizzo and then Glaber Torres. Anthony Rizzo missed a couple weeks at the start of September. He's still got 32 home runs this year. Like Anthony yeah, Rizzo oh, can mash. Rizzo. So do Absolutely. I feel good about giving Aaron Judge like a free base in the what do you want to call it the sixth inning of a tie ball game so that Anthony Rizzo can come up that doesn't make me feel good and how's Glaber Torres doing behind him he's got a batting average of 251 on the season with 24 home runs but in the like in September Glaber Torres is hitting 368 that's insane wow Glaber is having an excellent September, which has definitely lengthened this Yankees lineup. So, I mean, I guess in the playoffs, if I'm the Yankees, I probably flip Rizzo and Torres, right? You put uh, Aaron Judge on as a free base, Glaber Torres with that high contact bat, and then Anthony Rizzo can still bring 30 home run power to the plate. Yikes, man. Yeah, so maybe you're not walking Judge, but I mean, also, he's probably going to end the season with around, I mean, we're guessing here, but somewhere between 62 to 65 home runs is probably my guess, would be the pace that he's been on. Uh, I guess double, for me, right? Aaron like, Judge, I, it, it's it depends. It's situational, I guess, Yeah, right? it depends. Like, if there's, if there's runners on, I'm probably going to walk Judge. I don't know. It, maybe I don't. I have no right. idea what to do. I'm gonna. It's gonna be so fascinating to see how. Hopefully, John Schneider gets a chance to uh, work some magic. And man, I know we're gonna have to go through Houston, and I know that's the actual like top dog of the AL standing in the way of the World Series. But like, man, am I? Would I ever love a Blue Jays Yankees series in the playoffs? Me too. Yeah, me too. And if the Blue Jays do finish first in the wild card standings, do you know, I'd need to double check here. Do you know off the top of your head, does the winner of that 
uh, wild card series play the Yankees or the Astros? The Guardians versus six goes on to play the Yankees. Okay. And the winner of the four five series goes on to Place play the Astros. Houston. So if we're playing for home field and we want that top wild card seed, the number four spot, then we would go on to play the Astros in the second round. I know that um Mr. Ack Millen one 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 brings up here Bradley needs to start for us in the playoffs experience and defense over anything else we got how do you feel about that obviously uh we were talking about this last night on long toss will the Blue Jays bring all six of their outfielders which of course would be Lourdes Teoscar Springer and then the three bench pieces JBJ uh Zimmer and Tapia? Tapia. Thank you. There we go. Tapia, yes. Do you think uh, of those three options that we, wa- we we see one of those three getting some playing time throughout the playoffs? Like, who's your outfield? Are, are, are you automatically going Teoscar, Springer, Lourdes? Or do you try and get a lefty bat in there? That's tough to say. Uh, how do you? How, what's your confidence level in Lourdes? Let's talk that because and he's been on the IL since September seventh. Was his last game against Baltimore, right? Maybe he gets a couple games in in Boston or Baltimore before the playoffs. But this is going to be a guy who hasn't played in a month, basically. In my opinion, the only question mark is the fact that he hasn't played since the 7th of September. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. has been nothing but excellent for this Toronto Blue Jays offense since the beginning of the season. He's probably having his most consistent season we've watched him have with this Blue Jays team. And on top of it, I think that uh, he does add a little bit of variety to what pitchers are going to be facing, right? We're going to see... When they face Lourdes, a guy who is a high average, high on base percentage type of dude who maybe doesn't have the power that some of the other Blue Jays hitters have, but is going to be able to hit for uh, average, get on base. Okay, so coming off injury, right, is a, a reason to be concerned, right? He's not exactly in the flow of things. Mm hmm. So how was he before the injury is my next question, right? And if we look at August 15th, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. batting average 310. Mm -hmm. Not the highest it's been. I think it peaked around 315 earlier in the season, but besides the point. 310, August 15th. Slugging percentage, 780. Uh, Sorry. Slugging percentage, 420. OPS, 780. Right, okay. Since then. So from August 16th to September 7th, he was not exactly lighting the world on fire. Batting average under 200, 194 in 18 games leading up to the injury. Slugging percentage 292 and an OPS of 548. So that's a pretty reasonable sample size of, he you know, kind of cooled off going into the injury or the IL stint. And, I mean, there's questions around that as well, right? Was he trying to play through the injury? Absolutely. Could be. Could be he got injured in the middle of the summer, had stuff nagging at him. That could totally be. Um, I mean, we've talked about this before, Adam. When it comes to Lourdes Gurriel Jr., there's probably not a higher ceiling guy on this team when he's hot. There's no one you would rather have at the bat When the bases are loaded, okay? He is like the Grand Slam king of the Blue Jays. Exactly. And on top of that, Lourdes does have a cannon of an arm, and we have watched them alternate other fielders into that left field position, and it's been a little sloppy. Left field, not not that I have the utmost confidence in Lourdes as a fielder. Of course, he has one 
or uh, not won gold gloves, but he's been runner up for some gold gloves because of that cannon of an arm he has. And it does give runners on third base something to think about when it comes to a fly ball and tagging up and trying to score. You know, I I think Lourdes is a lock in left field personally. I think uh, I'm with no you. Way you go I think, a different fielder. Yes. I think if he's healthy, he's in there. Agreed. Cold or not, he is uh he's earned a spot. Like as long as he's healthy, I think exactly. left field and, is his. And maybe uh, late in the game you do see a guy like like Jackie Bradley Jr. come in. Maybe you do well, see in the 8th inning Bradley Zimmer take over. But look, if if Jackie Bradley Jr. comes in to the outfield late in the game to like hold on to a two run lead or a one run lead. He's taken out Tay Oscar, not Lourdes. Yes. Right. Do you agree on that? I would, I would agree on that. I would agree on that. I think Tay Oscar is definitely more of a li- liability in the outfield than Lourdes is again. Not Lourdes has this way about him of making me incredibly nervous when he's catching a ball, but he always mm-hmm. seems to do it. <laughs> I, you know, like he pulls it off, but he always he always makes you like pull at your collar, being like, "Oh, that was more difficult than it should have been." Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, anything in the air, I feel all right with Lourdes. Yeah, it's once he's fielding it on the ground, I'm like, "Oh, how many runs are scoring here?" <laughs> mm-hmm. my question. But yeah, no, the big arm, I mean, is gonna be a real asset keeping guys from going. I mean, he's got a reputation at this point of having a cannon. So even just that as a factor, I don't think big time, you're not going to go first to third on a hit to left field in the corner like, that Lourdes is picking up. Like it could be the difference between a late inning down by a, a run scenario where the opposing team risks it. Yeah. But with Lourdes, they may be like, you know what? It's not worth it. We've seen him. Get enough outfield assists throughout his career to not to not risk it. Absolutely. 